Hi, it's Dr. Lori, and I'm back with more Real Bargains. These are the objects that you have found at yard sales, thrift stores, estate sales, online auctions that you've sent to me through any one of my many different ways you can send uh, photos of objects to me. And I've identified them and appraised them for folks. Oh my gosh, you're not going to believe the things that the thrift stores are missing. So here we go. Uh, the first real bargain comes from, oh, I forgot to tell you, I got permission from everybody who, of course, um, has sh allowed me to share these real bargains with you, and I'm using pseudonyms or fake names for all of them, and everything's based on an actual sales record where a similar piece has sold recently. First one is Dan. Dan's a theology student and shops at the thrift stores, shops at the thrift stores and, and likes to save objects that relate to, of course, the study of theology or religion. This particular piece is a book, and it's The Life of Jesus Christ by J. James Tissot. It's a first edition book and he got it at, of course, a thrift store. Now, the condition is lousy, yes, and I always tell you the condition is lousy and I always tell you, you know, be careful of condition. Condition is key. It is key. However, the piece is also very important and this particular piece has a lot of attributes that make it important, like it's autographed by the, art, by the actual author and it's a first edition. And the autograph is actually to another famous person and it's a relatively long inscription. So it talks about this relationship between these two people right in that particular book. The book dates from 1897. It's a very good example. However, the condition is poor. So it's been in water. I'm not great. I'm not crazy about that kind of element, but I don't want you to overlook other aspects. So you open the book, you get this great autograph. It's a wonderful inscription. It's a first edition. And for $10 at the thrift store, Dan got a piece that in this condition is worth $500. Now that's a real bargain. This particular book in excellent condition, first edition with an autograph is worth $1,500. So for five, $500 for a $10 investment at the thrift store, Dan got a great real bargain. And then this is Ed. So Ed has this particular piece, also a thrift store shopper. And Ed actually goes to the thrift store in a major American city and he pays for his wares by weight. He shops in what are called the bins and the bins are actually where all this stuff goes and then it's actually priced by how heavy it is. So in the bins, you wanna make sure that you're getting very, very lightweight stuff so you're not paying as much for it. This piece is a Herman Miller chair. It's, of course, a very famous piece of mid-century modern furniture. It's designed by an artist named Charles Eames, and you probably have heard of Charles and Ray Eames if you've studied any kind of furniture. And here's the thing about furniture, you know, all of you folks are going, oh, no one wants furniture and everyone throws away furniture. Furniture is still extremely important in the market. Now, I remember when I was doing, of course, one of my events, and I was in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and this particular same type of chair came into my big public events, and that chair was in like a teal color. So the different colors of the chairs are gonna be important here. This one, of course, is wheat, the one that Ed actually found at the thrift store. Now, this one is a great example of mid-century modern furniture, ergonomically correct, so when you sit down in it, your body feels comfortable. That was one of the elements of mid-century modern. And he got this piece from the bins at the Goodwill for $2, $2. This chair is worth 1,200 bucks. It's a wonderful example. People are always looking for it and it's molded. It's a good example and one that you think can show you that, you know, even in these places where you would think they'd recognize something of great quality, this piece of furniture is a real bargain. This next real bargain comes from someone I'm gonna call Allie. Allie went to an estate sale and she decided that she was going to negotiate. I always tell you to negotiate. I like to negotiate. I like the exchange and I like it for a couple reasons. It's not only about getting the value down because I help buyers and I help sellers. The idea of negotiation opens a conversation. You start to talk to people. So you're talking to the person who's trying to sell it to you or you're trying to talk to the person who's going to buy it from you or has an interest in it, a potential buyer, this is always important because you start to make a connection. And that may not have a sale for you then, but it might have a sale for you later. It might also get the price down and it might also help you to come to a meeting of the mind. You might learn more about the object. So think about that. I like that. I like the conversation. A lot of the fun of antiquing is about, of course, who you meet and the story, the thrill of the hunt kind of thing. 
So Allie is at the estate sale and they're asking $20 for this rooster. Now, if you look at this rooster, now again, I'm not big on animal figures, okay? I like animal figures like the next guy, but I'm not big on having like, you know, a main animal figure piece. Here's the thing about animal figures though. They're very popular. I'm probably one of the few people who doesn't care about having an animal figure. Although I do like fish, I have to say that. Anyway, so I digress. This particular piece is a really good example. And this particular piece, $20 is the asking price. She starts to talk to the estate sale people and she gets it for 15. So she sends it to me through our send a photo on our website through an online appraisal. And I basically get back to her and I say, okay, well, you know, do you need a written report? Blah, blah, blah. We go back and forth and I identify the piece as a piece of stone lane. It's marked right on it, right? It says stone lane. So Allie would have known that. And I identified it as a work by Carl Walter, right? So Carl Walter is one of the designers for the pottery firm Stone Lane. And it's a collective of many different artists who are working under the Stone Lane umbrella. If you'll notice, it's really quite fine. It's painted, it's wonderfully handled. It's got this area at the, at the tail that actually could serve as a vase. It's perfect for, of course, a kitchen. And they were intended to be kitchens because, in kitchens because, in fact, the French actually introduced the image of the rooster into kitchens, kind of like relating that idea of a rooster or something that's waking you up in the morning into, of course, what happens early in the morning where you're making breakfast kitchens. So having said that, the Carl Walter Stone Lane piece, she got it for $15 because she negotiated, empowered, I want you empowered. And in fact, this piece worth $650. It is, of course, made of porcelain. It is hand designed. It's wonderfully hand painted. $650 for a $15 investment. Now that's a real bargain. That's a great one. Then I met, of course, Sue. And Sue and her husband go yard sailing on the weekends. You know, I really like to be out and about. I can see where all the yard sale people are, love it just to be outdoors. It's a weekend, carefree. Go here, go there, get your girlfriend or get your husband and take a little drive and see what you can find out and about. It's a lovely way to get to know if you're driving a new neighborhood. When I moved into um, a new home, I was like, well, let's drive around and see. So I would get one of my friends and we'd drive around. So you kind of learn the roads and you kind of learn what's happening in your community. So people will actually map it out in the old days, you know, the old days when you'd map it out with actual papers or do you remember MapQuest when you had to actually print it out or those maps that actually fold out? You could do that too. Anyway, I digress. So I meet, so Sue gets in touch with me through a video call. Call, right so I'm doing a 10 minute video call with Sue her husband's there and they said well we saw a lot of stuff at this yard sale Dr. Lori but you know what we were gonna pass this by and Sue said no let's not pass this by I kind of like it well it's a collage so it's abstract it's abstract non-objective art so let's do that for just a little nanosecond a lot of people don't like it right when I was at the Yale Art Gallery, I can't tell you how many times I'm standing in front of the Jackson Pollock painting at Yale and they're going, oh, my kindergartner could do that. Yeah, your kindergartner probably could do that, but he wasn't Jackson Pollock. So he's not getting $141 million for your kindergartner's artwork. Here's the thing about non-objective art, art that doesn't have an object or abstracted art, art that you can kind of make out what the object is, but it's abstracted in some way. People don't connect to it easily. So it takes a little bit more time and interest. You have to sort of like get acquainted with that artwork. But Sue liked this. She was acquainted with this. She liked this piece. So this piece is a collage and it is non-objective, but she sees a signature on it and she realizes that that signature might be somebody important. Does a little bit of research when she gets home, finds out that the signature is of a Vanguard artist, a group of artists, and a Vanguard artist named Lee Reynolds. We're talking on the video call, of course. She's shopping, we're talking on the video call. And I said, well, you know Lee Reynolds pieces, particularly collages, when you apply other things onto the canvas in addition to a painting, collage, right? You know that these particular pieces can be pretty valuable. She said, well, I didn't know that. She goes, we paid $15 for it. $15 for this piece at a yard sale. She said, they were just happy to get rid of it because it's kind of big. So I think it was about 24 by 30 inches, pretty big. And I said, well, this particular piece, you'll be surprised to learn, is a Lee Reynolds original collage worth $750. She's floored. She's floored. She's on the phone call with me, you know, through Zoom, and she's going, oh, my gosh, Dr. Lori, I can't believe this. Yeah, it was really a wonderful yard sale find. And, of course, 
a real bargain. <laughs> This next real bargain is from a woodworker named Jose. And Jose did what I always tell you to do. What do I tell you to do? Use what you got, right? Use what you got. If you're a nurse and you know about medical tools, you're gonna be ahead of the people who don't know about medical tools if that's what you're collecting. Collect what you know. So Jose actually applied the information he had as being a woodworker to how he was going to buy this particular work. This is a mask. It's an African mask by the, of the Dan people, the Don people, basically, the tribe in West Africa. And this mask is all hand carved. And uh, recognizing how it's hand carved is how Jose knew he was going to take this home from the thrift store. So he recognized the carving techniques in the back. I always tell you, look at the back. I want you to look at the back. And I want you to look at the back because that's where all the secrets are hiding. They're hiding behind the door, behind the front. You can cover stuff up in the front, but the back is gonna reveal information and I'm gonna teach you what it is. This particular piece is a great piece. Jose picks it up for $6 at the thrift store and recognizes on the back that it's carved out by hand with relatively primitive style tools. It's a 20th century Dan mask from the Africans. It's used in initiation rite ceremony. So when boys become men, ages 13, they do an initiation rite ceremony in this tribe in Africa, and the masks are part of this. The mask has to feel like and be structured so it can fit on the head. This is relatively important. People don't realize that. So it can't just be for decoration the way you'll see it, you know, up on a wall or something. These masks are actually used for cultural ceremonies. Bought it for six bucks at the thrift store. It's worth $300. Condition is good, right? You're gonna see that over time, the condition is going to change. Oils on your hands are gonna make those areas come, become lighter, made of native woods. $6 investment at the thrift store were $300. Actual sales records where similar pieces are selling. It's the real thing, and that's a real bargain. This next person I'm gonna call Mary. Mary went to the Goodwill, another thrift store, and actually purchased this particular table. This is a gaming table. Now, gaming tables are kind of fun. We didn't have a specific gaming table growing up. We had the kitchen table. You wanted to play a game, you did it on the kitchen table. You wanted to have dinner, you did it on the kitchen table. You needed to have a big decision about money or college or a job, you did it at the kitchen table. The kitchen table was the place because we didn't grow up with particular money. We we're gonna have different tables for different things. But tables are always a good investment, I say. People go, oh, it's brown furniture. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I don't like that. Hey, you know, you need surface space in your house for everything from, you know, your laptops or you're trying to display a new collection or you have to put up the Christmas tree and you want to do it on a tabletop, whatever the heck it is. You've got to think about having these pieces. So when you have an opportunity to buy a good piece of furniture, like a chair, like a table, like a chest, I don't care what style it is, it's always going to be functional. Furniture is useful. Don't listen to the naysayers. I've been doing this a long, long time. This particular piece Mary got at the Goodwill thrift store. The, you know, and basically she paid five bucks. So five bucks. So she gives, you know, she gives them a Lincoln. She, five bucks. Is Lincoln on the five? I think Lincoln's on the five. Who remembers? Anyway, gives them a Lincoln. I'm hoping it's Lincoln. <laughs> I don't even remember it so bad because you always use like Apple Pay now. You don't even look at currency. Anyway, I digress. So this particular piece is burl wood. It's burl wood. It's a gaming table. And a gaming table means that this table is actually cut in the middle and then it kind of opens and closes like a sandwich. You open it up, you push it apart, and all of a sudden you have a lot of table space to play cards or backgammon or chess or whatever of those ancient games that you would play. Those are just some of the ancient games that were played all the way back. So this particular gaming table is of a style from the 19th century or the 1800s. And it has beadwork and it's burl wood. So it's contrasting the beads, those little circles, those beads all the way around the edge and the burl wood are a contrast. Very typical in 19th century furniture design. This particular table, of course, is in beautiful condition. I couldn't even believe it, what good condition it was in, for $5 at the Goodwill. Now, this particular table is in nice condition and somebody decided to give it away. It had a couple of little issues at the bottom, but basically very good condition, beautiful piece, and it's a real bargain because it's worth $450. It's a wonderful example and one where you don't have a lot of work to do. You know, a little bit of cleanup, right, on the top, Murphy's Oil soap, 
uh, you know, clean it with a white cotton cloth to get the dust off of it, and you're ready to go. Also with these tables, you can push them up against the wall so they can be out of the way so you can have room for your other pieces, right? This is another real bargain. That one was certainly a real bargain. And here's another real bargain. This is Chris. Chris went to an estate sale. And estate sales, you know, depends on the time of the day when you're there. It depends on many different things. But if you're there at the estate sale, I want you to do a couple of things. I want you to take a lap. I want you to walk around the whole house and figure out where this family put their value. What did they value? What did they think was quality and where did they spend their money? Were they art people? Were they furniture people? Were they china people? So try to figure that out. If you can figure that out, you can be ahead of everybody else. I'll talk about selling and, and, and how to buy smart in other videos in this one and I do in many of my other videos too. But. For this real bargain, I want to highlight what Chris did at the estate sale. She goes to the estate sale, she's walking around, she sees this piece, she's attracted by the frame. And the frame is what she says is what drew her to this particular painting. So she sends me a photo through our website for an online appraisal. You can send me a photo too of your objects. Sends me the photo. I get back to her. She says it's signed. She's very excited that it's signed. Well, that's good that it's signed. This particular painting is a wonderful painting of seagulls and a seascape with the clouds. The clouds are really the subject rather than even the sea. But you can see the seagulls and, of course, the sea, the ocean, and also the clouds. And it's by a New York artist named Francis Strait. And Francis Strait, relative well-known New York artist of the 20th century. It's a nice painting. It's in good condition. Of course, it's in this, it's in this frame. Well, the painting has its value. She pays $55 for it at the estate sale. So she's happy with that. She says, hey, the frame is beautiful. I'm going to send it off to Dr. Lori. Well, the artist is an important artist listed. They talk about listed artists. Listed artists are those that are in these large lists that were kept over centuries and centuries by art historians. You can find them online. You can find them in reference books like Davenport's and others. I'll, and Benazit, I'll talk to you about books later. This particular piece is a wonderful example and the frame is really great. The frame is an early 20th century frame. That frame has lovely details, composition matter, and hand carving. That frame alone is worth about $250 and this painting is a real bargain. It's worth $400 with the frame. So painting and frame for a $55 investment, $400 for the painting and the frame. Relatively small in scale, but a really nice example and truly a real bargain. When you're looking for objects, I want you to look for quality. I want you to learn how to identify it here with me. You can watch these. I hope you're liking the real bargains. If you do like these real bargain videos, please go down to the comments and tell me that you want more. And I really hope that with my help, you find your real bargain too. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for watching.